Yes, this is John from All Points TV, and um, sitting in, I'm sitting in today for uh, Sam Jahari because he's been called away because of his business, and uh, we want to, we didn't want to cancel the show because we have a very important guest. We have Tara Marina in the, uh, the studio today over in the recording booth area, and I'm in the I'm in the uh, control booth. How are you doing, Tara? Good. How are you, John? And um, we have an event that you want people to be aware of, and it's coming up on the 26th of uh, September, which is, what, two weeks away now? About two weeks, a little less, 10 days, nine days? Nine, nine days, days. yeah. It? So it's like, yeah, it's coming out. Today's the uh, 16th. 10 so, days, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, I guess you add this, you know, so you look at the six and you can say, you go from to, to the two six, yeah, it's, it's 10 days, nine, 10 days. So anyway, we're in the middle of the day here, so pretty much. Anyway, um, we want to talk about this, and uh, this is going to be, what is, the, what is the event called? I got the flyer up, but I want you to cover all the information. So the event is called the Flint Recovery Walk and Rally 2015. And this is for um, addictions and... Now this is a recovery-oriented oh. event. So what we're doing is we are letting the community know that recovery is possible and that it's actually not a bad thing to rid the stigma around addiction and recovery. So it's a celebration of recovery. No, that's like, uh, now how many years has this been event going on? This is the first year. This is the first year. So yeah. it's pretty exciting to be part of this. It's really exciting. This is something that Flint has needed for a while now. And when I found out that they Flint did not have a recovery walk and rally, um, I was kind of surprised. And I knew at that point that I um, had to jump on board and get something started. Now, this is a, so sounds like you initiated this. You actually put this together yourself, or were there other people behind this? Or? Uh, this is pretty much um, done by me. Um, and I've had some planning help, though, with uh, New Paths, Aaron McClelland, uh, who is the clinical director there. So, um, yeah, it was basically, um, you know, mostly myself, um, you know, getting the sponsors, um, getting the permits and the insurance, and... Um, you know, the, just, you know, the idea. Yeah, I was um, actually walking down the street because I was doing my recovery uh, coaching intern at New Paths, and I was walking down the street with um, one of my clients, and I was like, this would be a really good place to have a recovery walk. And we um, drove in my Tahoe, and we saw the route that we wanted to, um, that would be good um, for the recovery walk. So, um that's how it started. Um, the idea was in April um, when I was doing recovery, co recovery coaching training at Genesee Health Systems. And then um, my internship at New Paths was a summer. So I think July. So you're jumping right into it. I mean, it's like you're just going through the process of becoming a professional in that field and then you're already organizing these kind of events. So it, that's pretty good. I mean, I think it's a really good testimony to your, your uh, go-getiveness, I guess you'd call it, you know. Yeah, I have a lot of energy. Um, I've been called uh, very energetic and vivacious, but um, yeah, I have a lot of energy and doing something like this is, it's like second nature to me though. Um, you know, in, during my active addiction, um, I helped plan parties and events. That's what I did. You know, I was a club girl, I was a party girl, and I was, um, you know, into the rave culture. So this is kind of the flip side of, you know, what, what I learned in my addiction. So some of the skills are actually, you know, you can flip them to they actually work for more for the benefit of you instead of the destruction of a person. So, I mean, the benefit, I mean, the organizational skills are, that's a tremendous asset to have. And that's what I'm, you know, why this recovery walk is so important is to let the community know that People with active addictions can have recovery and turn around and be really good assets for the community. So, um, so yes, um, the addiction is awful. It's so prevalent in our society, but it can also be used for good purposes. It's, um, I, I say to people, the dark is a gift. The pain is a gift. Because, I can see. Yeah, I can see that. Yep. So. No, it's like, um, what route are you going to be taking? Now, you said you went around, mapped it out on, with your Tahoe and stuff. Uh, where is it going to be covering? 
So we will be walking down Martin Luther King Boulevard where New Paths West is and we'll be going south on Saginaw. So MLK turns into Saginaw and we'll be going past um, all the new businesses, Blackstones and um, you know where the old metropolis was and we'll, be, we'll continue south and we'll pass the McCree building and then we'll go up to the main courthouse and hang a right on Court Street. So we're gonna take court and then make a right on church and follow church all the way down to where Kersley is, make our way around by My Brother's Keeper mm -hmm. and Genesee Health Systems over on 5th and then back. That sounds like a quite trick. Now, how many it's, miles is mapped out for being? It's a 5K non-competitive walk. Oh, that's quite a bit. So, um, you know, we'll have two water stations, so um, it's a non-competitive walk, so we want everyone to, you know, have a, a, an easy walk, um, so that's, that's essential. Now, if you, you got a keynote speaker here, I'm looking at the flyer, so you can flesh this out a little bit too, though. You got the keynote speaker, it's going to be uh, Congressman Dan, uh, Dan Kildee. Yep. And also, I can't, we can't read the other person, because uh, I got the other, it's uh, shrunk up so small here. On it. Who is this, the other uh, person you have with you? or We have um, Deborah Garrett from Real Detroit. Now, Real Detroit is a recovery community organization. They're kind of, um, they're actually what the Serenity House of Flint is, or we're, we're becoming. So um, she will be there speaking um, on the epidemic that we're facing, the current heroin epidemic that we're facing, and um, the addiction in general. But she'll also be talking about the Unite to Face Addiction Conference that's happening in Washington, D.C. So this is a walk and rally, but this is a national walk and rally that's happening in D.C. where Steven Tyler is singing, um, Sheryl Crow is singing, um, the lead singer from the Goo Goo Dolls, I believe. And then um, one of the Eagles members will also be performing and speaking. That'd be, that's a great lineup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, she'll be speaking about that, the national issue. Now, the, the recovery walk here is, you know, a local, um, regional um, uh, way to um, talk about our issues here. So how did you come across with the idea? You said you're walking with this person and, and you got the idea. I mean, but uh, was there some kind of thing that you're aware of that is in existence already occurring? before this happened or before it started working for you? Um, well, when I did that recovery coaching training at Genesee Health Systems, Kevin McLaughlin, he um, has recovery allies over in West Michigan and they do recovery palooza, I believe it's called. And um, when he was speaking about it there, that's when I had the idea, I wanna do a recovery walk. Now, let's see, well, now, who are some of your sponsors? Because they're, they're up on this flyer, but I'd like to cover them so they can mention, because that's kind of a, you know, they deserve the props, you know. Yes, we have some really great sponsors. Um, Genesee Health Systems is actually one of our major sponsors. They made a very big contribution to the recovery walk. Um, and then New Paths, of course. Um, and then um, we also had uh, have Barnett Financial out of Grand Blank. Okay. Um, wonderful people. Um, Global Publishers, which publishes On the Town Magazine. Kim Gray, she's the publisher. Kim is always out there um, doing philanthropy. She has the biggest heart ever. Um, it's also the magazine that I work for, too. Um, then Brian's Hope. Now, Brian's Hope is based out of Waterford, I believe. They're in the Oakland County area. And Jeannie Richards, she's the one that heads it. And um, she actually lost her son to a heroin overdose a few years ago. Well, she's, and been, she's been in the studio here with Sam yeah. uh, about a year or so ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's a huge advocate. She is very, very huge on, um, you know, helping. Um, so um, Brian's Hope and then Hope Network. Hope Network, um, they're where the old Insight building used to be. Okay. So they're also a major sponsor for us. Um, and uh, they do a lot of great work in the area too when it comes to addiction recovery. And then um, we're actually gonna have an It Works person there. Those wraps, those, have you tried those crazy wrap things? And Erica Granada gave us a nice donation for um, the walk too. So we have um, other sponsors too, and you can check uh, the other sponsors out at our website, which is www.flintserenityhouse.org. Now the Serenity House too, um, you've talked about this before on another show about that. It's a different, little bit of different approach to, uh, to, um, to overcoming addiction that's generally most people are unaware of. I mean, I don't think a lot of people are aware of the approach. It's a little bit different, isn't it, the approach that you guys use? Or 
it's very different um, in terms of what people are used to. Um, you know, I on the last show I mentioned this, and I'll you know this will be kind of something I'll keep saying over and over again. But um, it's this is all ancient medicine. This is all stuff that's been around for thousands and thousands of years from different many different cultures, just different spins on it. So this is kind of bringing what was in the dark back into the light. So um, it's a complementary medicine. It's, um, you know, from my perspective and my addiction, you know, I had five years in um, doing a 12-step program. And when I found this stuff, it's like my whole recovery, it took it to the whole next level um, and in every way, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. Um, so when I found it, um, I knew that I had to get it out to my people. That's how I felt, like my people with addiction and recovery, because I know from sitting around 12-step programs, I just was around so many people that were still just, just afflicted. And if, you know, they had their recovery and they were clean, or I don't like to use the word clean, but they were in recovery and, um, you know, sober. So, but they were still complaining and on all kinds of medications and, you know, really trying to figure out what was wrong with them, you know, and, you know, that's where I was too. And when I found this, this was like that light bulb, like that huge, gigantic light bulb that was just blaring at me, like, you know, and I'm like, finally, finally, I get it. You know, finally, I have the answers that I've been waiting for for so many years because I was seeking mental health services for anxiety and depression when I was 23 years old. And then, you know, that's 23. That was, I found this when I was 30, 36. So what, 14, 13 years, I was trying to figure out what I was missing 13 years. And, um, this was it. I know that's the, uh, it's a tendency I've heard of people who are addicts or recovering addicts. They would tell me that, um, they felt something amiss, and they didn't have the, they didn't think they had the resources to go seek, or the wherewithal to go seek out the ordinary routes for treatment for depression, or so they start self-medicating, and that kind of spiraled downward, so they got addicted to these illicit street drugs, and, but then when they come to recovery, they realize that a lot of the problems weren't addressed, and they wish they had taken the, more the, the route there that they could have taken, that was, you know, for legitimate, you know, like the typical route of mental health, and all those available resources, but they said the self-medication is a trap they fell into. Well, self-medication, yeah, um, with mental health, that's definitely huge. I mean, there's so many people out there that don't even know they have a substance abuse problem. Um, so, yeah, what I mean, what we do is we we really do approach the entire person, mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. Um, so, yeah. So it's like, no, um, you mentioned the 12-step program, and there's a TV, you know, commercial out that actually kind of sounds what comes across to me, sound like somewhat very critical of the 12-step program. And, um, but of all the people I talked to who went through, you know, recovery, they did it through using the 12-step program or a variation of it. And so, I mean, for you, was the 12-step program fairly effective on its own? Yep. Besides what you talked about, basically the missing piece that you were seeking, you found it. Yep. 12 steps is how I did it at first. That's what got me into the door. That's what, and, and it's, a, it's a program that is led by God. It's a spiritual program, and it works. What I'm saying is that this will take your recovery up to the next level. So what we do is we do a lot of inner child work, um, which in the 12 steps you do, there's um, 12 steps, Fourth and fifth step is where you really get into the moral failures and see what you take a look at your wreckage. You take a look at all the relationships, everything that has hurt you or that has caused you pain. And when you start to do that inner work, you start to change. You start to get honest with yourself and start to see yourself for who you really are. So the 12, the 12 steps was great for that. But then when I found inner child work, which is a method that we use, it, it takes it like a step further. So 
you're doing the inner work and what you're doing is you're you're focusing on trauma um, all the trauma that has happened to you in your life that you can remember so I suggest that people go back to certain memories that caused them trauma relive the trauma relive the trauma while they're inside of their body because sometimes when we have trauma we want to get outside of the body and view it as a movie so but if you're viewing it as a movie there's trauma so you have to get in the body and you have to re-experience the trauma and the emotions the key here is the emotions behind the trauma so once you feel all every single emotion that happens during that trauma what happens is the emotions become transmuted and they will release from the body so when they release from the body, what happens is you will take your current self back to that past self and you will give that past self the reassurance and the love and that it was denied, that you were denied. Mm. So when that happens, there's like an energetic shift. There's something that um, happens that I believe is like a soul retrieval. It's like a piece of your soul breaks off during the trauma and when you do that inner child work you call it back to you that's an interesting way of putting it you know you're losing part of your soul and you're bringing it back to you i mean it's like uh because i think there's like um, a lot of people i don't say a lot i think a lot of people wake up the old tv thing for the ad for partnership for drug free america used to have an ad you know you know on tv where they show this guy running from the police and this is and they grab him they said nobody plans to become an addict Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's like uh, what causes this is like a lot of times people are totally unaware of why they're why they feel the need to do some of the, use some substance or to do these activities or do this engage in these behaviors. And I think there's a lot to be said about that. I, and it basically, and what you're, it's kind of simultaneously going back with the Freudian psychology is, uh, psychoanalysis has been criticized for being a dead end by a lot of people. But I think you got to have both approaches. You got to address the behavior as well as the source of the what caused the behavior in the first place. Otherwise. Yeah, you could do it. If you just take the behaviorist approach, I think you could just, you could contrary. It's effective to a certain degree, but I, don't, I, I think that actually it might be like the, basically there's seeds of a, a destruction down the road that might reappear. Certain stressors may, if you don't know the source of the issue in the first place, just using the behavioral approach won't prevent you from having another down, like a downhill sliding or whatever on that. And so I think both issues got to be addressed and they got to be approached like you're very therapeutically. And I think that's a, uh, and that was a question too I was going to go with. Do you have a therapist on staff that um, is because a lot of the stuff would be traumatic, um, very traumatic for certain people, you know? We, we do peer to peer counseling. So we don't have a licensed therapist. So we, we use people that have been through this before. So it's kind of like recovery coaching. Like recovery coaching is where somebody that has had the addiction has found their way out, has, has long term recovery, and they help that newcomer, that new person, not newcomer, but new person. Um, get it and it's any way you know to um, get recovery um, so yeah we do peer-to-peer -peer counseling and let me add to you about the inner child work this is such a there are many different ways that people have done it um, and I just explained the process that works and that I have seen work in myself and I have worked have seen worked in working in my clients um, once you do the tra the traumatic, uh, when you go back to the trauma and you transmute those emotions, it's almost like the memory disappears. It's like once you, it's like it's not there anymore because the emotions behind it are gone. It's, you, in, in order to understand it, you have to try it. So, um, and it's on, my or it's on my website, on my blog. You can find the directions, um, again, if you want to reread uh, how to do inner child work. Um, along, It's in meditation, so you do it in meditation. You can do it on your own. You don't have to do it with anyone. Which, But I do, when I put people on the table for energy work, I'll walk them through inner child work. I'll ask them, you know, is there a memory? Is there something that caused you trauma that you're, that's still showing up in your current day? Like, um, or I'll help them find the memory of what's happening in your life that's upsetting you. Because every time something in your life now is causing you pain, you can always find the root back in your childhood. 
Yeah, I, I, I really believe that. I think the child, you know, child gives, gives birth to the father. You know, that's basically it. So, you know, you are basically all this accumulation of the experiences you've gone through in your own life. And also, I think to some degree, because of the baggage everybody else carries along with them, you're the recipient of the baggage that your grandparents, your parents, your, the people around you also have. So basically, it's, you, there's a lot, I mean, the child is basically like a sponge. Yep. And there's a lot of stuff that goes in that, and we don't even, we don't sit there and really go through a lot of stuff and actually sort through stuff we see randomly every day. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you have a bizarre dream. That's my theory is a lot of times in a dream, like relax, like state, your brain plays back stuff that you didn't see before or were aware that you saw. Mm -hmm. And it puts it together, maybe in a bizarre fashion, maybe startling to your, your subconscious mind or now your conscious mind. I don't know when you're dreaming if that's your subconscious or your consciousness because if you can recall it, I think it's got to be in your conscious yeah. level. But I mean, there's things that come across like, there's memories that kids have that um, they never, until they actually really dealt with it, <clears throat> they never realized the source of their, ang their anger or whatever until they realized this caused this, this caused this, everything was strung together. Yep. And they just didn't realize the source of that. Yeah, um, it can get really gnarly um, with the trauma. I mean, you can be just so wires, so many wires can be crossed that you just don't know where. That's where we come in. And that's where, you know, Genesee Health Systems and New Paths, you know, they're, you know, they're also trying to help untangle those crossed wires. Now, we have a method, though, that it works, you know, um, it works really well, um, you know, like along with the energy work, so... So yeah. So that's what interests me is because I had you had that approach to add it to this, and I was like that kind of intrigue. It was very intriguing to me. But anyway, we'll get back to the event itself. Yeah. Um, it's the uh, the 26th of this coming month, this month, and um, the, the registration says 9 a.m. Now, yeah. can people register through the website? Yes, you can register through our website, which is again www.flintserenityhouse.org, and if you go to our events page, you can register at the bottom at Events Bright. Now, somebody will say, hearing this, they'll say, well, I would say they're not, maybe they're not, they haven't gone through the addiction. Maybe they don't have family members who have, you know, gone through addiction and recovery. Uh, would you still, I think there's probably a lot to be benefit, you know, they could drive benefit from just being part of this, maybe even talk and discuss the things with. Would you still also then encourage them to take part in the walk? It's a community issue that we're facing. Mm -hmm. This is something that is all of, for all of us. Um, Everyone knows an addict or somebody that's struggling, and if you know, if you're even, if you're close to somebody that's struggling, you have to. It's a family disease, right? So the whole family gets to play, and just because the addict has their drugs, and then you have the addict, and that's almost an addiction in itself. And you change yourself to communicate with the addict. So you change how you speak with them. You change how you act. Um, you know, whether it's through manipulation or whatever, um, but it's it's a family disease. I did see that you struck up on the manipulation part. I've seen you know, addicts will use the an, a manipulation, the emotional manipulation on their family members, and later on, I've seen that like basically switched. I've seen them start their their family members learn how to use that against them. Yep. And it's like it's like and basically, I mean, and, and it's not, I can't really fault that. I mean, if it gets something that's positive done, I guess they feel inclined to use that. But I mean, I have seen that in my own personal life. I have seen people use manipulation on the people who are in their own families who are going through addiction because they've, they've had it done to them. And they said, okay, they just, they just pick it up and use it as well. Yep, so it's, they, yep. and it's true. It's a family disease and um, it's a codependent, which um, there's, you know, 12-step programs for codependence. You know, it's an addiction in itself when you're dealing with an addict. Um, it's an emotional kind of an addiction, a mental kind of addiction, but without the drugs. So You made a point about it being a community problem, and I'd certainly agree in the Flint area. Addiction's always been here. I mean, it's, it's one form or the other. Heroin was big in the 70s. It never went away. People had this misconception. You just didn't hear about it as much. You still had users out there every day. Um, I think being a factory town, a lot of people used to numb themselves because they didn't want, they didn't like their jobs. They weren't tied to it on a spiritual or emotional level to go into, you know, work in the factory. So, I mean, if you, when I was a kid walking, I was a teenager walking through the uh, parking lots of the AC parking lots, you know, across the street from the AC up there on Dort Highway, you're at the corner of the lot. They're like usually fenced in. They had piles of beer bottles and wine bottles and whiskey bottles. And you could see people, you know, that's, what pe that's where people are, like, you know, dr drinking up and throwing their empties before heading into the plant. Yeah. 
uh, Flint is, oh, God, did I pick a hard one to help, huh? Yeah, it's like it's, it's you got your work cut out more than cut out for you. I mean. We, we all do, all of us providers. I mean, it's an epidemic that we're facing. And now we've got these prescription medications that are being abused and people are turning from painkillers to heroin to get high because it's four times cheaper. Um, but it's what we have here in Flint is an epidemic. And it's, I mean, if you want to go back into the history, I mean, you have these kids fresh out of high school getting these jobs at these plants, making all this money with no, you know, education. So they go from making, you know, nothing to all this money and these big promises and, um, you know, these these jobs that are on the line too. So they're repetitively doing the same job over and over again. We're not designed to be like that. Mm -hmm. Human beings are not designed to live like that. So the suffering, and when then GM pulled everything out, it was like they're living these lives and, um, you know, the, this American dream. And then the American dream just goes away and they're just left confused with all these wires crossed. Like, where do I go? What do I do? And then these people, you know, had children and gave their trauma to them. It's just a cycle. It's just a continuous cycle. And when you get recovery, it's taking the courage to break the cycle. Because, I mean, let's face it, we've all seen, I mean, I've seen some horror stories of addiction and um, the abuse that's going along with it. They abuse, they're abusers, they're being abused. Um, you know, they would abuse their family members and then the, the uh, person using uh, the drugs were being abused by their suppliers, by the people around them, they're being manipulated too as well. I mean, it, it's basically what, it creates a very bad segment of society and it's awfully hard to deal with. And you, I mean, anybody's lived in Flint, you know, Flint, Michigan is a very, you gotta be a, you can't be a wimp to live here. Mm -hmm. Because you're seeing if you are that or you're if you're oblivious to everything, maybe you can handle it. But if you're if you have some knowledge of what's going on, it, it's going to be kind of it's going to impact on you. You're going to feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, awareness is like everything. Like, um, but yeah, it's uh, Flint is a it's a tough one, and you know the addiction here it's it's hell. Mm -hmm. There's so much of it here, and that is our hell on earth. So anyway, we're going to wrap this uh, little, you know, this uh, gathering today up a little today, and uh, we gave out the information, but we'll give it out again. So we'll have you go over there, Tara, again, and so people can have it in their minds. Plus, they got it on the flyer. You want to impact. You want to make a point. You want to keep on driving it home until, you know, they they show up. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. Come out, man. There's going to be fun, um, music, uh, food, and this is a free event. So. Um, we also have music by Kedry Young. He'll be there. He's a folks bluesy artist. Um, he's great. He's a um, great artist. And then we have Kara that's going to be there. And she's also um, a beauty. She's a um, great singer. Um, so, yeah, um, we'll also have uh, vendors out there. Um, Serenity House will be out there doing free energy work for anybody that wants to try it. Um, we'll also have chair massage out there. Um, we're going to have you know, Congressman Dan Kelly, of course, speaking, and Deborah um, speaking too. Um, just fun. Maybe some face painting for the kids. I'm still working that out last minute, but let's hope face painting for the kids. Well, I hope it was a great trial. Yeah. And uh, people, like I said, you've heard it with the information here, so go back and replay it as many times as you need. Also, you can, we'll have the website. You can go, just click onto it and go right to the website that you have set up. They yep. can register. They can also find out more information. And um, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap it up totally? Um, no, that's it. Just, um, you know, donations are gratefully accepted. Um, we're trying to become a recovery community organization, have a um, stable spot where we can be a liaison with anyone that needs recovery services or information, and then also offer our holistic medicine um, at an uh, inexpensive price um, for the community. Because right now we're doing donation-based holistic medicine. That sounds great. Yeah. Well, anyway, thanks again for showing up, and um, I hope it's a big success. And uh, there are also, you know, updates too on all your progress. And this, as as your as your organization develops, we definitely like to hear have you come back. Yes, thank you so much, John. Thank you.